Hello, gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another episode of Gentlemen Masterclass and Gentlemen's Club Whiskey. That's right. You heard that right. This is going to be a cross-posted video between both of my channels. I don't know if you guys are subscribed to one or the other, but this is a very special occasion that I'm celebrating today. So I'm making a special video uh, of two accomplishments combined into one video and I'm going to talk about both of them. So this is going to be a long one. We're going to pour ourselves a drink, a very special drink to talk about this and going to have a smoke, something that I rarely do. This is something that I partake in maybe once or twice a year, mostly uh, Cuban cigars and or uh, cigarellos. This one says Cuban cigarettes from Cohiba, but I'm pretty sure that these are little cigarellos miniature cigar cigars right the book 50 japanese whiskeys available now on amazon.com worldwide make sure that you pick this one up as i am the pontiff of japanese whiskey let's go ahead and move this one to the side as i need all my desk space for today so we are drinking to my first business sales today and come to find out the very same day that I made this sale, uh, there was some news about Shackleton's ship. And I'm going to read the story about that. If you're watching this on Gentleman's Club Whiskey, actually the very next whiskey that I was supposed to be reviewing is this one right here. Uh, this Scotch whiskey is the Caribbean Smooth 8 Years uh, Double Age Duars from cask series number one and i'm showing the back of the box there goes the front of the box duars true scotch h eight years caribbean smooth blended scotch whiskey rum cask finish so this was the next one up in line but considering the news that i read on the bbc today about this ship being found we're going to go ahead and crack this one open i bought this one about six years, not six years, oh my goodness. I bought this one about six months ago. Never opened it, was waiting for the day. I got so many whiskeys like this still boxed up. New without the seal being cracked, but we're definitely cracking this today. Just being what it is about the news about this ship. Let me see if I can get on the BBC really, really, really quick. Just open up another window pane here. Let's go to bbc.com. Do they have a search? All right, yeah, they have a little search bar there. Let's type in Shackleton. Look for the first thing that pops up. Okay. No, we don't wanna watch the video there. I hope this doesn't automatically play. Let's back out of that and let's go to the actual article that I read. So I read this at the start of my work day but now here it is eight hours later but still same day about this ship being found title of this bbc article is called endurance shackleton's law ship is found in antarctic let's go ahead and open up these smokes i feel like i gotta be doing something man gotta be busy here let's celebrate first we're gonna light up one of these things all right Oh, these are true cigarettes. These are not uh, little small cigarellos. But you know what? Since I bought it, might as well just smoke it. Man, I was, I was, I was hoping for a real little cigarello there, a little thin cigar, cigar. But I guess I bought wrong, man. I assumed that this was one thing, and it turns out that it was not. Because on one side it says Cuban cigarettes, and then on the side of it it says cigarellos. So, anyways, Cuban cigarettes, Cohiba. I can smoke this pretty quick, because it's not a cigar, but man, I was hoping that it was. Alright, let me get this thing lit up real quick. 
All right. Let's take a look here. This article, one more time, Endurance Shackleton's Law Ship is Found in Antarctic. Scientists have found and filmed one of the greatest undiscovered shipwrecks 107 years after it sank. The Endurance, the lost vessel of Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton, was found at the weekend at the bottom of the, of the Weddell Sea, which is uh, just off the coast of Antarctica, just shy off the coast of Antarctica. The ship was crushed by sea ice and sank in 1915, forcing Shackleton and his men to make an astonishing escape on foot and in small boats. Video of the remains show endurance to be in remarkable condition. Even though it has been sitting in three kilometers, 10,000 feet of water for over a century, it looks just like it did on the November day it went down. All right, so they say it's in very good condition and it actually landed right side up, not on the side to the right, not on the side to the left, not upside down. It landed and they said this is the most perfect preservation of a crash ship if there ever was one. So by the grace of God, this thing is still in pristine order at the at the sea bottom. But I don't think it's going to be able to uh, be picked up from that depth with any type of equipment. It's just going to have to stay there and they can continue to explore it with machines and video cameras and things like that but that that's that all right i think i'm done reading this article i want to go ahead and talk about what we have here shackleton blended malt scotch whiskey based on an antique blend of mackinlays rare old highland malt whiskey the spirit supplied to the 1907 British Antarctic Expedition. To say the least, before I even start beginning to read the back of this box, which is probably going to tell the full story anyways, but I want to kind of tell it in my own words. There was this exhibition done in Antarctica, and uh, essentially, long story short, they had, they had brought some Mackinlay's blended scotch whiskey with them, and... They had to leave that whiskey behind, unfortunately. And it was buried inside of uh, the snow and left to the ravages of time and nature for uh, about 100 years or so. There was another expedition that went out to Antarctica and they found this whiskey. And it was completely frozen and it was inside of a nice... Uh, preserved state very good condition to bring back it was perfectly preserved so they brought this whiskey back I, I think it went first to New Zealand or Australia and then there was a special type of um, what is the word that I'm looking for there was some type of special release where the government of New Zealand released the whiskey to uh, ship to the UK where Richard Patterson of the Dalmore, the very famous Richard Patterson had picked it up and, and he pretty much knows this, this, uh, Mackinlay's whiskey that has been defunct. It's a defunct brand for X amount of years. And based off his nosing and some scientific experiments, he was able to recreate this whiskey. And there was a more expensive bottling of this recreation that is sold and that I guess is still being sold. I don't know if it's off the market now. And then there's this cheaper one. It's still a recreation, but not as expensive or using as much expensive components as that as the uh, premium one. So this is the not so premium one, but still can't remember how much this cost me it wasn't cheap but it wasn't expensive by all means so i picked this one up found it here in japan let's talk about it all right we're done with that 
Let's go ahead and take it to the back of the box. Let's look at the front of the box real quick. There are some dates on here. It says 1901 to 1903 was Discovery Expedition under Captain Falcon Scott. 1907 to 09, the Nimrod Expedition to South Pole. 1914 to 1917, Imperial Trans Antarctic Expedition. It has Richard Patterson's uh, seal of approval on the front, as well as his signature on this little gold foil thing here. Uh, because Mackinlay, or Mackinlay's, this defunct brand, is owned by, what is it? I think it's White and Mackay is the owner. Yeah, right. So... This is a brand that Richard Patterson works for, so he was the one that recreated this. It couldn't have been in any better hands but his. Looking at the back here, it says, In the early years of the 20th century, Sir Ernest Shackleton led one of the most famous expeditions to the Antarctic, overcoming tremendous obstacles to ensure that all of his men returned home safely. That expedition is one of the greatest stories of exploration and leadership in history and has inspired adventurers across the world ever since. Shackleton ordered 25 cases of Mackinlay's rare old Highland malt whiskey to take on his expedition of 1907. In 2007, 11 intact bottles containing this perfectly preserved whiskey were recovered from under the ice beneath Shackleton's base camp. This has inspired our master blender, Richard Patterson, to create this Shackleton whiskey as a personal and deeply felt project. He has combined the best Highland malt whiskeys, allowing them to marry over a long period to create an enigmatic blend, blended malt with a dash of body and a whisper of smoke. It has complex notes of vanilla honey and orchard fruits with real warmth and depth at its heart. Like Shackleton himself, a contribution from sales of this whiskey will be made to the Antarctic Heritage Trust, New Zealand. Right, so the whiskey was brought first to New Zealand before it made its way to the UK. All right, so... The Antarctic Heritage Trust, they have a website here, www.nzaht.org. This will support both the ongoing care of Shackleton's Antarctic base and the trust mission to conserve, share, and encourage the spirit of exploration, a spirit embodied by Shackleton. All right, so let's go ahead and open this one up out of the bottle. And let me show you guys that bottle, by the way. Let's put that there. See if I can angle this just right for the camera. The bottle has a nice little bluish tint to it so that when you have this golden color whiskey inside of there, it appears as like a lime type just a lime colored green uh yeah transparent green on the back of the bottle there is a nice little embossing here and it reads i believe it is in our nature to explore to reach out into the unknown ernest shackleton well that's quite nice and the label looks just like the front of the box here let's go ahead and crack this open It looks like a cork cap is in here. Let's get that off. Yep, nice cork cap. And let's pour our first dram. This is my first time ever tasting this. There we go. So, you guys know how I do this by now if you're a subscriber of the channel so first I'm going to 
conduct my own personal tasting notes off camera for about the next five to ten minutes and then I'm going to come back and share it all with you and let you know what I think. Smells very good as it is right now but we're going to let this sit for about a good five minutes and then yeah I'll be right back guys. So I'm back. I've delved into this one. It took me a lot longer than usual but I think I've got its inner workings down. I got my tasting notes in front of me and I'm ready to share them with you now. So here we go on the nose. We have vanilla, candied apple, and we also have honey and lemon cake. Lemon cake, this is a new expression coming from me. I don't think I've ever said this about any other whiskey before, but it's certainly there, at least for me. And now that I've told you about it, you might be able to find it yourself when searching for it. On the palate, let's go ahead and put it on the tongue and see what it's like. Mm. At 40% ABV, very light, extremely light, easy to play with, easy to taste. It's not going to scare away anybody. And uh, this is something you can let your American friends have if they're wanting to try out a scotch without being scared away. This is a nice introductory whiskey for scotch for them to try so please let your american friends try this one also on the palate we have uh just a little bit of a slight cinnamon taste it's not very heavy at all but it is there butter cookies not sure i said that about any other whiskey that i've ever reviewed before but that is also there just something comes up and makes you recollect about these nice sweets that you've had as a child or even if you're still having and, and enjoying them now. Like I said, lemon cake on the nose, butter cookies here on the palate. You have uh, standard honey, which could be found inside of many whiskeys. Some gentle spices. I know it says somewhere on this box like there's some smoke or some peat, but... I'm not really getting that, but I would say that there is more like gentle spices in here. And there is some slight taste of apple also on the palate, which was, you know, coming over from the nosing as well. The finish. Mm. Creamy vanilla milk chocolate it's buttery and uh the butter cookies move over from the palate and you can find those inside of the finish as well the butter cookies really linger here and it's a nice taste to be left with so it's definitely a nice way to finish out is this one of my favorite whiskeys no is it one of the worst whiskeys that I've ever had? No, not at all. Everything is passable. There's nothing wrong with it. But none of these three major topics, meaning the nose, the palate, the finish, nothing is exceptional here. But everything is done to a well enough degree so that you enjoy it. And you are not going to complain about it. It is worth trying at least once. Everybody should have this inside of their collection. If not for the taste or for what it is. Yeah, for what it is. Being a recreation of a whiskey that was lost to the ravages of time over 100 years ago. Something that is defunct if you're wanting to try with whiskey tasted like back at that time definitely try this one and for something if this is how it truly tasted over 100 years ago it was a very good start in the right direction mind you for a very pleasant tasting whiskey so i think i'm gonna close with that but man that was that was an experience 
I love the packaging on this. I love everything that is written here. It has the full story on the back. The bottle is beautiful. I like the embossing on the back. I don't know if you guys can read that. I'm not even sure if it's going to show up, but it's there. It's beautiful. The labeling is beautiful. Presentation is nice. And the taste does deliver. It delivers. I'm going to go ahead and say give this one a try. If it's probably not going to be at your local bar. My biggest audience is in the United States. And you guys barely appreciate Scotch whiskey as it is. Because you guys are always bitching and moaning. And you're really into your American whiskeys and bourbons. So will you guys enjoy this as much as me? I'm a Scotch man myself. Even though I'm an American. I think you can still enjoy it. I was going to say try it at your local bar first. But your local bar in the United States is definitely not going to have this on the shelf. This is just a very off the wall random thing. Who even knows how many of these have been shipped to the United States. But if you're my brethren in the UK or even here in Japan where this is readily available. Go ahead. Uh, try to try it at your local bar. And if they don't have it, just just buy it from the supermarket. It's cheap enough. So, you get it gets my seal of approval. Anyways, very long video here. In celebration of one, my uppage in, I don't want to say career, because this whole bidding and contracting job that I'm doing for my friend, it's side work, completely separate from my main day job, but... I only work four days a week at my day job, the other three days a week, and even days that I have the day job, I'm dedicating to this other job. I'm just I'm just juggling jobs. I got multiple jobs going on. This whole thing was in celebration of the new job and for making the sale. This was my very first sale, and what a big sale it is, about a hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars something like that let me let me check my notes real quick man hang on here hang on i said i got it written down this contract that i sold on the low end because i gave them an option i'll find out which option that they chose tomorrow morning it's 11 o'clock at night now but Tomorrow morning, I'm going to find out which option that they chose. But for the light option, it's a 148,000 USD. And on the heavy end, it is going to be 175,000 USD. So either one is still a big number to me, but hopefully I'm hoping that they chose the one on the on the big end. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out. All right. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching. Very long video here. Salute to you wherever you may be out inside the world. Make sure that you guys drink responsibly. And as always, gentlemen, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy. Mm -hmm.